Number nine, a person carries a plank of wood two meters long with one hand pushing down on it at one end with a force F1 and the other hand holding it up at 0.5 meters from the end of the plank with force two. If the plank has a mass of 20 kilograms and its center of gravity is at the middle of the plank, um, what are the magnitudes of the forces F1 and F2? All right, so a center of gravity is at the middle. Uh, so here's a nice little picture, all right? The uh, plank here is in black. It's two meters long, as we can see. There's a force one pushing down on one end. 0.5 meters away from that end, there's an F2 pushing up. And then they tell us the center of gravity here of the entire plank is located right in the middle, right? So that'd be exactly one meter. Um, and uh, the plank has a mass of uh, 20 kilograms. So if I were to think about the center of gravity, right, the weight here, would simply be equal to the mass, right, which is 20, multiplied then by the acceleration of gravity, right, 9.8. Um, okay, so now what our job is, right, is to find F1 and F2. Now, the interesting part about this problem is it actually uh, doesn't necessarily matter where you frame the axis of rotation. You might say, well, don't I need to know where the axis of rotation is in order to do this, and where might that be? And it actually doesn't matter. There's a couple of places that might make our life easier uh, than than other locations, but you're actually free to basically free to choose where you'd like to place your axis of rotation. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use this side as a, and call that my axis of rotation. Uh, the reason why I'm going to do that is because I know that this force, if this point right here is my axis of rotation, uh, this force that I just outlined produces no torque. Right, because it doesn't, it's the, the lever arm is zero, right? This force is perpendicular at the start. There's no distance. So what that does is that allows me to essentially eliminate this force in terms of the torques. All right, and now I'm left with NF2 and, and my center of gravity or the weight, and that makes my life a lot easier, okay? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this as my axis of rotation right here. Okay, and what I'm going to do then is say, well, I know this thing is in equilibrium, so therefore the sum of the torques is zero. All right, there's three torques essentially in the problem, right? T1, T2, and then CG, I'll call that uh, T3, okay? Uh, but we already talked about one. So one, what happens to torque one? It cancels because the R value is zero. So I'm not even going to bother writing it in, all right? Um, so I'm going to start with uh, my uh, torque two produced by force two. If I have to think about that, I want to make sure my sign here is either positive or negative. All right, and remember, counterclockwise rotations produce uh, positive torques. Uh, yeah, I hope hopefully I said that right. Counter. Let me just say it again. Counterclockwise rotations produce positive torques. Clockwise rotations produce negative torques. So if this right here is my axis of rotation, we apply a force upwards here. The bar is going to rotate counterclockwise, right? So this will be a positive torque. Uh, then opposite would be the case of, right, the weight here. Here's my center of, uh, or my axis of rotation. The weight is pulling it down, and the bar would rotate clockwise. So therefore, I'm going to have T2 minus my T3 is equal to zero. This basically now means that the two, uh, torque 2 will be in balance with torque 3. Remember that the torques are just functions of the lever arm times the force applied times the angle between the force and the lever arm. Okay. Now, all the angles in this problem are 90, all right? The lever arm is the distance between the axis of rotation and the force, and the, that angle is the 90 between those two vectors. So I'm just going to uh, make this easier. Just call it R1. No, well, not R1. This is 2, right? R2, F2 will equal uh, R3, F3. And now remember, we're after finding either F1 or F2. So notice here, I can now solve this equation for F2. When I do that, we divide both sides out by R2. And now this would be my equation. Do we know all the variables? And we do, right? Let's plug them in. So F2 will simply be equal to the lever arm of three. Well, remember, this was my third force. I'll call this a little three down here, okay? What's the distance between that axis of rotation and uh, the center of gravity? Well, they told me it was halfway. The whole plank is two, therefore R3 is one meter. Uh, what is F3 then? Well, remember, the force at 3 is essentially the weight, right? And so that's simply going to be 20 multiplied by 9.80. And that's all then divided by R2, or the lever arm for force 2. 
and force twos here, the lever arm was 0.5, right? Now all we gotta do is just throw it into the calculator. So we get one times 20 times 9.8 divided by 0.5, and we get 392 newtons. 392 newtons. So F2, all right, I'll write a little equal sign over here. That is F2, okay? So F2 is 392 newtons. All right, great. So that takes care of F2. Now, how shall we do F1? A couple ways to do this. I think the easiest way now to do this is by thinking about, since this board is in equilibrium, okay, not only are the torques, the sum of the torques equal to zero, but guess what else is equal to zero? The sum of the forces. Okay, so the sum of the forces in this problem will also equal zero because it is in equilibrium. All right, now, when we do the sum of the forces, we have to take into account the directions, right? So how many forces are there in the problem? Well, there's three, F1, F2, and then essentially the weight, okay? So what's the sign of F1? Well, that's negative, so negative F1. What's the sign of F2? That's positive, so plus F2. What's the sign of the weight? Well, it's pointing down, right? So that's negative, so minus F3. And that will all equal zero. What are we after? We're after F1, okay? So why don't we just add this baby on over to the right-hand side? And now we're gonna get an equation that looks like this. F2 minus F3 should equal F1. And there's the equation. Now, do you know your value for F2? Well, yeah, we just found it, right? 392, so let's plug that in. Do you know your force at three? Well, yeah, the force is the weight, right? So my voice cracked a little bit, I got so excited. So that's 20, right, multiplied by 9.8. So that's gonna be 9.80, and that is equal to F1. And now all we gotta do is calculate it, right? I don't know why I said 390, it's 392. I'm just noticing that. So this is 392 here, sorry. So here we go. 392 minus 20 times 9.8 and 196. So 196 newtons will be equal to F1. Okay, that's equal to F1. Great, and that concludes the problem, all right? Now just to, um, so basically if, you're curious, stick with me here for a second. If you're not that curious, feel free to turn me off. The problem's over, all right? Well, what I wanna show you here is I wanna show you that, uh, let's just pretend we didn't choose you know, this location as our axis of rotation. Let's pretend, so I'll erase this little bit over here. All right, why don't we pretend that we chose uh, this as our axis of rotation? Now, I decided to choose uh, that right under F2. For what reason? Well, for the reason that I know that this force produces no torque because the lever arm is right at that axis of rotation. So R, if you look at the formula over here, R is, R is zero. If R is zero, the whole term is zero, right? Okay, so now let's just, I'm just gonna calculate F1 from this, okay? So let me do that in red. So remember that this right here now is my new axis of rotation. So I know that the sum of the torque since this is in equilibrium is equal to zero. There's a torque produced by F1, so I know T1. Um, what kind of rotation would that produce if this is the axis of rotation? Well, F1's pointing down and would cause the board to rotate counterclockwise, therefore it's positive. What does this torque, uh, or, well, I should say this force produce a torque, right? And this force would uh, cause the bar to rotate clockwise, so therefore it's negative, so minus T3, that equals zero. So T1 is equal to T3. Right, so let's expand now on the torques. Again, all the angles are 90 degrees, so we're just gonna simplify this to R1, F1 is equal to R3, F3. Now I wanna solve this for F1, okay? So how do we do that? Simply divide out R1 from both sides. So now your formula is going to be F1 is equal to R3, F3, all over R1. Great, there it is. Now let's plug in the values. So what is R3? Well, now think, remember, so they told us that this center of gravity is um, halfway in the middle of the board. So that means this total distance here is one meter. But remember, my axis of rotation is here. And I know the distance from this end to the board, right, to F2 was 0.5. So what does that mean this remaining part is? It means it's 0.5, okay? So this value right here now is 0 0.500, and that is the R value for torque three. Okay, so that's 0 0.500. What is F3? Again, F3 is the weight. So that's simple, just plug that in, 20 times 9.80.
and then that's all now divided by R1. What is R1? Well, remember, we just basically discussed it, right? I mean, if this is the axis of rotation, and they told us this distance in the problem, then that is R1, 0.5 meters. So 0 0.500. 0, 0. Notice what's going to happen. They both cancel. Let's just F1. Let's just calculate that now. So what's 20 times 9.8? Look at that. 196. Right? 196. And what did we say? It should have, well, I mean, not the, what did we say, but what did we calculate before F1 to be? Look at it over here, ladies and gentlemen. 196. Huh. Coincidence? I think not. And I could keep going. I could choose a whole bunch of other locations. There's a whole bunch of other techniques. But, you know, I just want to show you that so that when you're approached with a problem like this, don't overthink where to place that, um, that axis of rotation. Okay, we like to place it under one of the forces so that they cancel, but you could have even placed it all the way at the other right hand side of the board. It just then we couldn't solve it right away. We would have to incorporate the sum of the forces formula. We'd have to do a substitution. It would be a little harder mathematically, but we can still do it. All right, so don't overthink that. Just pick a point and get to the math. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped and I hope it gave you a good perspective on how these torques are operating. And uh, if it did, please subscribe, even hit the like button, that'd be great. And uh, if not, leave a comment below. Let me know how I can make it better. All right, guys, thanks very much. Speak to you soon. Bye.